One would think that the party in power would receive the criticism if things aren't exactly going well, but it appears that has not been the case. A new Media Research Center study of ABC, CBS, and NBC's nightly newscasts reveal that Republicans are receiving much more negative coverage than Democrats ahead of Tuesday's vote, 87% to 67%. Here's just a small taste. If Republicans win control of one or both houses of Congress, they will do everything in their power to sabotage the economy. Political violence has always existed on all sides of the political spectrum, but today's political climate is making it much worse, and it is a uniquely right-wing problem right now. This is a contest between part of the country that believes in continued and expanded liberal democracy, uh, an effort to pursue a more perfect union, and a part of the country that is now attracted to the idea of fascism. Kaylee, so not only is the tenor negative, but the study has shown as well that the topics reflect differently than what we've been discussing Americans care about, right? With, with coverage far more outweighing on those networks, election deniers and threats to democracy versus inflation, crime, things that voters care about. It's both. Yeah, Media Research Center did this study. I'm so thankful for them because they are, are, are able to quantify the, the, uh, the what we know is a bias. So they quantify it. They do a great job. But what is interesting are the subtleties we don't catch. So like, for instance, Tudor Dixon running in Michigan, great mm -hmm. candidate. You know, her opponent, Gretchen Whitmer, calls her the biggest threat to democracy. Not true. But what's interesting is the Associated Press, their subtle description of Tudor Dixon is the far right commentator. That's how what is supposed to be a wide publication describes her. Um, you look at Stacey Abrams when she said the lie about there's no heartbeat before six weeks. What happened? Well, Twitter, when she trends, we know they curate those trends. This is pre-Elon. The description of why she's trending is doctors agree a heartbeat doesn't exist. Reports from NBC and NPR confirm. We know that science says otherwise. My point is the subtleties where there's this cabal of media, social media, that in lockstep just lines up behind Stacey mm. Abrams, Gretchen Whitmer, and and every other Democrat. And it's subtle, but it's noticeable if you look for it. That's right. And Harris, going back to that sort of overlay, so four years ago, it was 88% negative coverage, not only of Republican candidates, but also then President Trump. Mm -hmm. Why is it that a different party is in power, and yet the negative coverage of the GOP is at 87%, nearly identical? Why doesn't the mainstream media have any objectivity, or at least try to have some objectivity? Well, it may speak to the issue why the president and his team are not the only people who don't cover the issues that people care about. I mean, look how long it took some of these other networks to even start to cover where we are in inflation mm. and the crisis at the border. It wasn't until we saw 15,000 people under a bridge, the Haitians who'd come through, mm. before the administration started to really pay attention and then the complicit media started to pay attention. And what are they complicit? it in not giving the American public the whole truth like I, I expect that actually from members of the media I, I don't know if politicians necessarily feel beholden to do that but we should so you know to me at the end of the day when the question is asked who do you believe this is why people don't often pick us they don't pick us as journalists just across the board they lump us all together because they feel like they're not being told the truth and it's really detrimental really what what jeopardizes democracy is when the people who are protected by the Constitution decide not to tell it. Mm, that's absolutely Across right. administrations, yeah. because it doesn't really matter who's in power, they cover and see things the same way. Right. Joe, and you wrote a book on this. I, I, I argue that the only thing mirroring uh, the fleeing of Democratic Party voters, as we just covered in the last block, would be those fleeing those networks. Precisely right. And Democrats now watch for instance, Fox News primetime more than they watch CNN primetime. You say, well, how can that be? You know, well, because maybe we're talking about things that matter to people. Right. Look, if you're teaching a class and you use bias before, I'm going to go a step further. It's activism, right? The, the bias <laughs> thing, we yeah. passed that exit, you know, some time ago. Good point. But it shows you what little influence the media has in 2022 here, okay? Let's break this down. Republicans are getting 87% negative coverage, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. First 100 days of Trump, it was 93% from CNN, NBC News, all above 85% New York Times, Washington Post, mm. ABC, CBS, all right? First 100 days of Trump. You know, what was the number one overwhelming story? You know this. Russia. It was Russia collusion. This is two years before the Mueller report even came out. So that drives up those negativity numbers. So if all of this coverage has been so negative, then why aren't 
Democrats poised to take back the House, uh, keep control of that, and gain seats in the Senate. And the answer goes to influence once again. So then I go to this one survey that the Hill did in 2016, but it still applies now. We looked at 59 newspapers, all major newspapers, and their endorsements of the two candidates at the time. And 57 endorsements went to Hillary Clinton, and two went to Donald Trump. Hmm. And what that got Hillary Clinton was a concession speech and a set of steak <laughs> knives. In other words, no one cared that they were being told how to vote and why you should vote for this candidate because the messenger, to your point, simply is not trusted anymore. Harris. Yeah, they, they don't trust the voice. Mm -hmm. And so they just tune it right out. And, and that's partially what happens late in the campaign. We were talking about this during the commercial, even with the ads. Right. I mean, people just start to kind of tune it out, and that's why the debates are so important. That's right. You saw Carrie Lake earlier. Yeah. Katie Hobbs in Arizona still won't debate her. So if she loses... Talk about a threat to democracy. Right. Not debating in a public forum, being transparent to your American voters. That is your true threat to democracy. Yeah. And as well, not only just the debates, but, you know, throughout the last years, what about the press pushing back, asking actually thoughtful questions instead of what taco did you have for breakfast right. or what ice cream flavors or whatever it is that they ask, right? That fourth estate, we deserve better from them. And I, I wonder also, doctor, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Like, is the White House following what Medically? MSNBC is putting on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's, let's actually, talk about that. Um, <laughs> or is it that these media outlets are following what is coming out of the White House? I mean, again, tonight we're going to hear our president talk about threats to democracy, anything but what people urgently care about as reflected in the polls that we discuss yeah. every day, all day. So who's taking cues from whom? Well, I think it became very obvious during COVID who's taking cues from whom. And you look at a lot of mainstream media and they got their talking points straight from the White House. Whatever Dr. Fauci said, that's what they were espousing. There was no critical thinking going on. And now it has turned out much of it was untrue. But that didn't matter. They were not looking at the evidence. They were not looking at this, this science. Even their experts. They were just following what the White House was telling them to say, and the same is happening now, which is why you're not hearing about the things that mean most to the voters, because the White House also isn't talking about it. Yeah. Well, definitely there's no critical thinking in the White House, that's for sure. <laughs> but unlike what Hillary Clinton says about Americans, we know critical thinking does take place in everyone's brain otherwise. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.